Welcome back to the channel where medical topics are made simple. In this video, we're going to talk about the Glasgow Coma Scale. You're going to learn simple memory tricks and mnemonics to help you calculate the score. And by the end of this video, you'll know everything in this GCS table. This is great for nursing, EMTs, and med students, so make sure to turn on the captions and watch to the end. You can also follow along in our Teach Me Medicine book. If you don't have the book yet, it'll be linked down below. So what is the Glasgow Coma Scale? The Glasgow Coma Scale, or GCS for short, is a clinical scale that measures a patient's level of consciousness. Remember the A's, and think of it as a tool to measure how awake, alert, and aware a patient is. The GCS score is typically used in trauma patients, or when there's concern for brain injury. It can also be used for critically ill patients, or during acute medical situations where consciousness is impaired. This could be seizures, strokes, or low blood sugar, to name a few. To calculate a patient's GCS score, there are three parameters to measure. First is the patient's eye-opening response. Second is the patient's verbal response. And finally, the patient's motor response. You can remember this with the abbreviation EVM. So remember, eyes, verbal, and motor. Each parameter has a score. The max score for eyes is four points. The max score for verbal is 5, and the max score for motor is 6. Here's a simple memory trick to remember this. The word eyes has four letters in it, and the max score is 4. Then simply move down the body, adding one point for each. The eyes are 4, then we move down to the mouth or verbal, which is 5, then we move down to the body or motor, which is 6. So remember EVM456. EVM456. Say that several times and write it down. The minimum score for each parameter is 1, so we can see the score ranges for each parameter in the table. We have 1 to 4 for the eyes, 1 to 5 for verbal, and 1 to 6 for motor. The scores for each parameter are then added up to give you a final GCS score. The higher the score, the better the GCS, the better the patient is. The lower the score, the lower the GCS, the worse the patient is. We can see the highest GCS score is 15, which is 4 points for the eyes, 5 for verbal, and 6 for motor. 4 plus 5 plus 6 gives us the 15. So a GCS score of 15 is the best maximum score, which means the patient is fully awake and responsive. We can also see the lowest possible score is a 3, which is 1 point for the eyes, 1 for verbal, and 1 for motor. So the minimum GCS score is a 3. This is important. You cannot have a GCS score of 0. The lowest possible score is 3. This is because the minimum score for each parameter is a 1, not a 0. So the lowest GCS score is a 3, which means the patient is unresponsive and indicates a severe brain injury or deep coma. To help you out, here's a quick table that correlates the GCS score with the severity of brain injury. A GCS of 13 to 15 indicates mild brain injury, 9 to 12 is moderate, and 3 to 8 is severe. You might hear the common saying, GCS less than 8, intubate. This means to consider intubating a patient with a GCS less than 8. This is important, so listen up. This is not a rule, it's just for education because you might hear this phrase. Different scores may require intubation, so use clinical judgment and follow appropriate protocols. Now let's walk through how to calculate the scores, starting with the eyes. You can use the memory trick mnemonic, no pain sounds good. We'll come back to this shortly. A score of four is the best. It means the patient is opening their eyes spontaneously. Three means the patient opens their eyes to sound. This could be a verbal command or a loud noise. For example, if the patient's eyes are closed, but they open when you ask them to open them, this would be a score of three. A score of 2 means the patient opens their eyes in response to pain. For example, if the patient's eyes are closed, but they open when you apply pressure to their nail bed, this would be a score of 2. A peripheral pain stimulus is typically preferred. This avoids a reflex response or grimacing effect. Finally, a score of 1, which is the worst, means the patient's eyes do not open at all, even with sound or pain. So you would give the patient a score of 1 to 4 based on their best eye-opening response. Now if we go back to the mnemonic, you can use the memory trick, no pain sounds good. No represents a score of one, which is no response. 
Pain represents two, which is response to pain. Sounds represents three, which is response to sound. Good represents four, which means everything's good, the eyes are opening spontaneously. So remember the phrase, no pain sounds good, one, two, three, four. Then we have the verbal response. You can use the memory trick mnemonic, don't moan random confused words. We'll come back to this shortly. A score of five is the best. It means the patient is oriented. In other words, they're communicating normally, they know their name, location, and date, and they're answering questions appropriately. A score of four is a little worse. It means the patient is confused. They can communicate, but their conversation is confused. For example, if you ask the patient the date and they give you the wrong year, then they're still answering the question appropriately by giving a date. They're just giving the wrong date and showing confusion. On the other hand, a score of three means inappropriate or random words. So in this case, if you ask the patient the date, they may respond with random words that don't make sense in the context of the question. They're still forming words, but the words are random. This is different from a score of two, which means incomprehensible sounds. In this case, the patient makes sounds such as moaning or groaning, but they don't form words. Finally, a score of one means no verbal response at all, not even moaning or groaning. So you would give the patient a score of one to five based on their best verbal response. Now, if we go back to the mnemonic, you can use the memory trick, don't moan random confused words. Don't represents a score of one, which is no verbal response. Moan represents two, which is moaning or incomprehensible sounds. Random represents three, which is random words. Confused represents four, which is confused conversation. Words represents five, which means normal words, they're oriented and conversing fine. So remember the phrase, don't moan random confused words. One, two, three, four, five. Finally, we have the motor response. You can use the memory trick mnemonic, don't extend or flex without local commands. We'll come back to this shortly. A score of six is the best. It means the patient obeys and follows commands. For example, you ask the patient to stick out their tongue or wiggle their toes or raise their right arm and the patient is able to do so. This means the patient has normal voluntary movements in response to a command. A score of five means the patient is able to localize to pain. In other words, you provide a painful stimulus, such as superorbital pressure, and the patient purposely moves their hand across their midline and above their clavicle toward the stimulus. A central pain stimulus is typically preferred. This provides a more complete assessment of brain function, and this can be a trapezius squeeze or pressure to the superorbital notch. On the other hand, a score of four means the patient has a normal flexion or withdrawal response to pain. In other words, the patient flexes and pulls part of their body away from the pain, but they don't localize it. A score of three is an abnormal flexion to pain. This means the patient has decorticate posturing in response to pain. In other words, they may flex their elbow and wrist with adduction and internal rotation at the shoulder. They may extend their knees, internally rotate their hip, with plantar flexion of the feet. A score of two is an abnormal extension to pain. This means the patient has decerebrate posturing in response to pain. In other words, they may extend their elbows with pronation of the forearm. There is also extension at the knees, internal rotation at the hip, with plantar flexion of the feet. A key difference between a score of three and a score of two is the elbows flex in a three, whereas the elbows extend in a two. Finally, a score of one means no motor response at all, not even to painful stimuli. So you would give the patient a score of one to six based on their best motor response. Now, if we go back to the mnemonic, you can use the memory trick, don't extend or flex without local commands. Don't represents a score of one, which is no motor response. Extend represents two, which is abnormal extension to pain. Flex represents three, which is an abnormal flexion to pain. Without represents four, which is withdrawal to pain. Use the prefix with to remember it. Local represents five, which is localized to pain. Commands represent six, which is following commands. So remember the phrase, don't extend or flex without local commands. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now that we know how to calculate the GCS, 
Let's do a practice question to quiz yourself. What's the GCS of this patient? A patient presents after a motor vehicle accident. The patient's eyes are closed, but they open when you ask them to open them. When you ask what happened, the patient states, I think I fell off a ladder. You ask the patient to raise their right arm, and the right arm lifts off the bed. What's the patient's GCS score? Here's the answer, but first pause the video and figure out the score. The patient has a GCS score of 13. The patient has an eye response of 3 because they open their eyes in response to sound. The patient has a verbal response of 4 because they answered your question appropriately, but they're showing confusion as to what happened. They knew they were injured, but instead of saying a car accident, they said they fell off a ladder. Had they started talking random words that had nothing to do with the question, then their score would be a 3. And if they just made sounds, then their score would be a 2. Their motor response is a 6 because they followed your command of lifting the arm. Hopefully this helped you understand GCS. Please hit that like button and leave a comment. Subscribe to Save Time Studying and not miss out on future videos and notes. You can find all of our flashcards, notes for the videos, and book link down below. Thanks for watching and hope you return for future videos.